This is our robotic radical prostatectomy model that was designed from a patient's MRI with prostate cancer. You see that we actually segmented all the bony landmarks and then molded in all the soft components. But what's unique about this model is it's made for a specific procedure, not for the approach. So you can go transperitoneal, you can do retzius sparing, you can go extraperitoneal, because this is an anatomical realistic simulation. Now what makes it also very unique is we've attached sensors that are, that are part of the neurovascular bundle that enable us to actually gather data about how much tension the trainee is placing on the neurovascular bundle. But also, it's perfused. It's perfused through these tubes that run into the intricate system that we have of blood vessels that attach to the pedicle, the dorsal venous complex, as well as the neurovascular bundle. So your trainees will be experiencing a very realistic simulation. Now, the integral unit of this model is actually the prostatectomy. So we have here the prostate, the seminal vesicle, the pedicles in which you can flow blood through to perfuse this entire system, as well as the sensors that are able to detect and collect data about how much tension is placed on the tissue. Now, attached to this will be, of course, the seminal vesicles containing seminal vesicle-like fluid, as well as a bladder that's approximately 400 cc's. So when the prostatectomy is done and the anastomosis is complete, you can actually see if your anastomosis is watertight and see the areas in which there are more likely to have leakages. So not only is this a realistic simulation, but it's one that enables you to detect clinically relevant metrics of performance that are integral to trainees teaching. And this is just showing you the simulation in action, right? So this is an extra peritoneal approach. The trainee can use cautery because this is a hydrogel. And as soon as the anterior surface of the bladder and the prostate is exposed and the pubic symphysis is also exposed, the trainee starts to do the bladder neck dissection. And you can see we've also recreated the tissue planes, not only recreated the texture of the bladder or the prostate, and even with the charring itself. So it creates a very realistic experience. You can see here we're opening the anterior bladder neck, the mucosa is very apparent, and the fluid that is leaking out of the bladder is also very apparent because that's what happens in real surgery. The seminal vesicles, as usual, are buried underneath the prostate, requiring retraction from the fourth arm. And you can see we're able to create this soft fiber fatty tissue of fat as well as dense fat. That's by altering the formula of the hydrogel. After doing the posterior dissection, the trainee then moves over to the pedicle. And you can see here the pedicle is very evident with its pulsatile flow as soon as they cut through it, requiring clipping. And the readings on the right are actually the data that we're collecting in real time from those sensors in the neurovascular bundle. Once the neurovascular bundle is completed, we then go to the final part, which is the anastomosis. And this is just not really suturing a bladder to a tube. This is within the context of a bladder that's on tension that requires the fourth arm to push down. It also is having a pubic symphysis in there, which sometimes causes collisions with the instruments. And you then can test the water tightness of the anastomosis at the end. You just remove the pubic symphysis and then fill the bladder with about 150 cc's of saline. And right there, you can see if there's any fluid flowing there. The surgical margins was a very unique trick because we infused the prostate with a fluorescence that if you turn your firefly on, you can see areas of positive margin. And here's the difference in the data of the neurovascular bundle between an expert and a novice.